Very well, good. let's talk about Eviyama Life Spa and how important marketing is. I mean, obviously, we talked about relationships before, but do you find that in this day and age, you do need to market more or does the word of mouth seem to do the job for you? Uh, word of mouth is great, but there's another kind of word of mouth that's on the web. Uh, there are um, searches that you can do in Yelp or City Search or Philly inside pages. Um, all those things give you an opportunity to say, talk about your experience at Eviyama, and we're very lucky to have really good reviews. So, absolutely, those things are very important. Web presence, our website. Um, we do. We are happy that we are unique and green because the media is interested in us. There was an article recently in the Rittenhouse Square Review on our organic spas, and we were happy to be in that. Um, in terms of uh, advertising, print advertising, we've tried that. We've done lots of things. Uh, we're present at events. There's an event that ties in uh, Living Beyond Breast Cancer is having their Yoga Unites annual benefit mm -hmm. that's on the art museum steps. Hundreds of people doing yoga uh, and will be in the tent there, the Healthy Living Expo tent. So all of these things help just uh, the web, person to person and getting out there. And Lindy, how about you? I mean, obviously, if someone is going through um, cancer treatments and they're using the Lindy Skin products, should they run into someone else or know someone that goes through it? I would think that that word of mouth is your best marketing. It is. Um, essentially, too, I think just from a business perspective, it's important for people to understand the value of word of mouth, referrals, the web when marketing and advertising budgets are shrinking. And, you know, the whole world is scrambling to learn and understand social media uh, in, a, in a way that's meaningful. And so we're in the same position. We're looking at social media much harder. But I think what's also critical is something that Michael is doing, which is, and his card even says, focus your vision. Part of it is being differentiated amongst, you know, your peers that may be doing similar things. So there's a million companies that make skincare. There's not a million companies that make skincare for cancer patients. So we talk to our constituents. And the other thing is we talk to the recommenders, the doctors and the nurses. Most people on cancer treatment want to feel safe with what they're using. And so we spent our, and still spend a lot of time talking to the medical community, who in turn are then the recommenders, the word of mouth, spreaders about our products so now michael i know that you said earlier in the show that uh, relationships um and that one-on-one -on -one personal touch that that you provide is the way that you market so uh, that's basically well it's duplicating. not it, it's not the only way not no, the only not, way no. okay and and i mean what's interesting is i'm marketing a business that's in the business of marketing marketing so <laughs> You know, we're helping nonprofits. On a nonprofits. show called The Marketing of Business. Imagine. It, 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 yeah. And I'm later I'll photocopy a mirror and we'll see if we all disappear. <laughs> um, no, but uh, marketing is something that I think we're all doing all the time and that we all need to be doing. I don't think that, uh, you know, it's been, it's been interesting. A down economy is not necessarily the time to stop telling your story. It's the time to make sure that you're telling it even louder. Um, and... So in some ways there have been, I mean, it depends on, on who you're talking to, what business someone is in, where their clients are coming from. But a down economy might be exactly the time to start marketing more. And in a lot of ways, that's what we've done. We've been uh, going to more conferences and presenting to more nonprofits. We've you know, done our first print advertising. We advertised in Grid Magazine, which is a green and sustainable magazine for Philadelphia because the green space is something that's very important to us as well as to uh, Penny. And, uh, you know, so we're trying to, to roll with it and, and figure out new ways to continue to reach out to new people who haven't heard about us through word of mouth yet. All right. So in the remaining time that we have, let's talk about some of the obstacles that each of you are facing, because it's been a very uplifting, positive discussion up till this point, um, talking about some great uh, suggestions that you all have, some ways that you've dealt with things. But what are some of the, the true life obstacles in business that are facing your individual companies? And what are you doing to overcome those obstacles? Peter? Well, one of the problems is paradigm shift. Uh, again, we, we, we're all in the middle of change and our customers are in the middle of change and change is uncomfortable. However, uh, when you're being faced with, I'm going to have to lay off 300 people or find the money, that's an impetus for change. 
uh, it, what's frustrating is when you go to a customer or a potential customer and you know absolutely that you can save them millions of dollars and you can help them be more successful at what they're doing and they just can't adapt to change. You know, they just pretend that the, there's nothing wrong with the economy, there's nothing wrong with their company, and they just can't see it. That's so frustrating. I was just going to say it's probably frustrating for you because looking at the big picture, you're saying, wait, I see that there is going to be a problem here. Absolutely. And, and some of these companies pay the ultimate price for not being able to change with the times. Well, when it comes to the security of your business, you must make that a priority. Yeah. And it's, it's not the like these people don't already use a computer security product. They're just using a very expensive one. Okay, listen up there, folks. And how about you, Michael? Is there an obstacle that, that you find your business facing these days? Well, I'm, I think that it goes back to what we were talking about just a moment ago in terms of the idea that maybe as budgets are tightening that it's easy to cut marketing. And um, the fear really, you know, so that becomes an obstacle in terms of working with organizations that it seems like the logical thing is to stop spending money on finding new clients. Okay. And that's or new supporters, new donors, um, that's not really going to help turn things around, is it? How about you, Penny? Um, I'd say one of our first obstacles was really getting the word out about what green is, what sustainable is, and why it's important. 60% um, of what you put on your skin shows up in your bloodstream. And more and more people are aware of that. In terms of uh, other obstacles, I'd say... Um, uh, they're more outside the business, things like parking in the city, issues in the city. Um, uh, I think the city's done a great job of drawing people in from the suburbs, but more needs to be done. People need to be really happy and comfortable in Center City. <laughs> okay, and how about you, Lindy? I mean, obviously uh, an obstacle is dealing with people who are facing a life or death situation, but yeah. aside from that. Right, I mean, so, you know, one could talk about my business in particular, the obstacles, but I think for the audience listening, um, I think an obstacle to all businesses right now, again, economically, when the individual is impacted, uh, then retail is impacted, and then manufacturing is impacted, which is more or less what I am, it goes up the chain. So I think that cash flow issues overall are an issue, and gone is the cushion for most businesses out there that would ride them through those tough times. And so being able to continue to market or talk louder about what we're doing, uh, the ability to do that starts to shrink. And so you have to get really, really creative uh, in order to overcome the cash flow issues to still be able to do uh, what Penny, what everybody, Peter and Michael are speaking about. It's, it's tougher to do. Okay. So there are four distinct businesses <coughs> with their obstacles and yet their outlook for the future and some suggestions for you if you're feeling like you have obstacles in your business world today. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll give you some final thoughts from our guests and also tell you how you can get in touch with each and every one of them. Stay with us. <laughs> 